Best diet for weight loss? There are actually three. If you're female over 40 or 50, you'll find this video invaluable. Hi, I'm Dorothea Damiak, former board certified naturopathic doctor, author of five books, and the creator of Using Proportions Blueprints. So you can finally get an A in the house. The reason why so many women over 50 are struggling to lose weight is very simple. They are not on the right diet. If you've been struggling to lose weight, you are on the wrong diet as well. Today I'm going to tell you how to choose a diet specific to your body type or, in other words, the best diet for weight loss that matches your body needs. People who gain weight belong to one of three categories. Overweight, but metabolically healthy overweight and carbohydrate sensitive, overweight with multiple hormonal imbalances. Which category yours? You'll find out shortly. Overweight but metabolically healthy? Are you there? You're in this category if you're barely overweight or started to put on weight recently. Is that you? You don't have to guess. There are two tests that can determine that for you. One is a waist to hip ratio. That one is particularly useful for women, less so for men. A waist to hip ratio of 1.7 suggests good, not necessarily perfect, but good metabolic health. To find out yours, follow these steps. Find a flexible measuring tape and stand up. You'll be measuring yourself while standing. Wrap the tape around your waist in the narrowest place. That will be about two inches about the belly button. Measure that point and record the number. Once done, measure your hips. Take the tape and wrap it around the widest point. Measure it and record your number. Divide the first number by the second number. If the resulting number is around 0.7, great! Chances are you're metabolically healthy. If the number is larger, like 0.8 or 0.9, your metabolic health is not that great. A larger waist to hip ratio indicates substantial visceral fat accumulation, popularly known as belly fat. If your ratio is 0.7, you should do well on any diet as long as you avoid junk and eat only real food. What's so special about real food? Processed foods make weight loss very difficult. Studies show that for every extra 10% of processed food, you end up with extra 18% of weight. So do yourself a favor and stop looking for the best diet for weight loss. It won't be low fat, plant-based or the zone. If your metabolism is healthy, you will do just fine with any diet, provided you're only eating real food. So what's real food? Maybe you know, maybe you don't. Here are a few cues. Almond milk is not real food. It's processed. Takeout french fries also are processed. So are peanut butter cookies, breakfast cereals, and protein shakes. Real food means carrots, broccolis, lentils, eggs, and fish. If you have no idea how to go about real food, I strongly suggest 69 Pleasures. It will teach you how to use veggies and meats without kitchen headaches. Give real food a try for one month and recheck your progress. If you lost weight, great. Real food is all you need to do. But if you haven't lost weight, this is not the best diet for you. The most likely reason is that you're not metabolically healthy. You may want to stick around to learn about another category. Overweight and carb sensitive. What's the best diet for weight loss for someone who is carb sensitive? For carb sensitive people, Eating real food may not bring sufficient results. You need to make additional adjustments. What's that? I'm going to explain in a minute. But for now, I want to tell you how you can check if you are, in fact, carbohydrate sensitive. Remember the waist hip ratio from the previous section? If your ratio is more than 0.75, you are in either this or the next category. To confirm your metabolic status with blood work, you can ask your doctor to order a HOMA IR test. It is the most useful test for discovering carbohydrate sensitivity. 
If your HOMA is higher than 1.6, your body has trouble with carbohydrates. And you'll need to, besides eating real food, restrict your carbs. Carbohydrate restriction is the best diet for weight loss in people who are carb sensitive. If your waist to hip ratio is over 0.75, you need to lower your carbs no matter how healthy you feel. One major mistake women make is that they think healthy carbs like quinoa or bananas are weight neutral. They are not. If you're carb sensitive, it makes no difference to your body how your mind classifies carbs, whether you see them as good or bad. All it matters to your body is how much sugar these carbs break down to and how fast sugar is released. If you're in carb sensitive category for weight loss, unless you get rid of those yummy sweet potatoes and heart healthy oats, you might be going nowhere with your belly fat. So if you suspect you're carb sensitive because you either have a large waist to hip ratio or a high HOMA number, you should definitely be thinking lower carb or more precisely, 50 grams of carbs of less every day on top of eating real food. This is the best diet for weight loss for people belonging in this category. But there is a small print though. 50 grams of carbs while eating processed food won't bring the same results as eating real food. Processed food will only make metabolic health worse, contribute to yo-yo dieting and eventually get you stuck with extra stubborn weight on top of various health problems. So don't. Real food it is. If you think low carb is the best match for you, try it for two months. If you see weight reduction, continue until you reach your goal. But if after two months your scale hasn't moved or worse, you actually put on weight, you can safely conclude this is not the best diet to continue weight loss journey on. Why? Because you likely don't belong to this category, but to the next one overweight with multiple hormonal imbalances. This category requires a little bit of more adjustment besides eating real food and keeping carbs low. It's because people in this category not only have carb sensitivity, but also other health issues that contribute to weight gain. Hunger is one of them. The best way to approach weight loss in this category is through increasing protein. Most people eat around 10-15% of calories in the form of protein. This percent satisfies a minimum protein requirement, but it's far from optimal. Low protein increases hunger, and that makes weight loss far more difficult. To reach an optimal hunger point, you need to eat about 30% of calories in the form of protein. If you don't know how much protein you eat, Download a macro tracker to your phone and input a few days worth of food. The tracker will estimate your carb, fat and protein proportions so you can have an idea of your typical macros. Check your protein percent. If your protein intake is below 30, you need to add more protein. Add high protein foods like fish, eggs, meat or cheese. However, while doing so, don't abandon real foods and keep your carbs below 50 grams. I found this to be the best diet for weight loss for super stubborn belly fat. Try this approach if you have healthy kidneys. Ask your doctor if you are not sure. Give this diet a try for a few weeks and see if it's for you. You may surprise yourself with results. In the meantime, subscribe, press the bell and see you next video.